Good morning and welcome back to our YouTube tutorial channel. Uh, today we will be helping out with a question coming in from the field regarding uh, twist lock connections. Um, so in regards to plugging in an i360 into a twist lock style receptacle, um, our i360s run off 120 volts, not 220. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our receptacle from the wall that looks something like this only coming out of the wall, we want to make sure that we actually have 120 volts coming to it, not 220 volts. So the best way to do that is to check all possible combinations of pins. So if we, let's take some notes so that we don't have to remember things. So on this receptacle, Let's, let's just pick and call each of these terminals something here. Um, so we'll start this top one here. We'll call this Terminal 1, Terminal 2, and then Terminal 3. And we'll draw a quick little picture on our little notes here. And we'll write those down. So I have Terminal 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So now I want to check all three possible combinations of those terminals for voltage to make sure that we have the correct and only the correct voltage. So I'm going to write down my possible combinations. So I have one to two, I have two to three, and then I have one to three. Like so. All right. So now we want to measure each of those combinations and jot down what they are. Okay, so I go from, this is measuring AC voltage on your multimeter. Uh, so I go from 1 to 2, and let's say I take a reading from 1 to 2 and I get 120 volts. Then I take a reading from 2 to 3, I get another 120 volts. And then I take a reading from 1 to 3, and I get 0 volts. Now, these are ideal voltages that I'm mentioning. Um, as a reference, something that I'm calling 120 volts is perfectly acceptable anywhere from 110 volts up to 125 volts. If we fall within that range of voltage, we should not see any problems. Um, also, when I say 0 volts, as long as we fall within the range of zero volts up to about four or five volts, that is also perfectly acceptable in AC utility power. Um, that we can be considered zero volts. So in the combination where I get something like this, 120 between two of the possible combinations and zero between the third, that is the correct voltage combination that we're looking for. That means 120 volts. Now, on the contrary to that, I'm going to give a second example as if this was actually 220 so you can see the difference because it can be similar voltages coming in. So we need to verify, make sure. So again, I will write down our three possible combinations, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 3. So in, in that in that possible scenario, so now let's assume that this, if we assume that this receptacle that we're checking is 220, we'll show you what you would expect to see. So, so if I check from pin 1 to pin 2, from pin 1 to pin 2, if I got 120 volts, then pin 2 to pin 3, I got 120 volts, and then pin 1 to pin 3, I get 220 volts. So in this combination like this, or anything that's similar to this where one of the outcomes is 220 volts, that means that this receptacle is a 220 receptacle, not a 110, or not a 120 receptacle. So if you get 220 on any combination of this, you cannot use this outlet how it is. This is set up for 220, not 120, and it must be rewired before we can plug in an i360. 
If that's the case, then we need to contact a local electrician to have the outlets rewired correctly. Okay, if we assume that that was not the case and that our first outcome here was correct, that we got 120 volts on two of the locations and we got zero volts on the third location or the third combination, then we have the correct voltage. So now what we need to figure out is we need to figure out which of these pins is the hot wire and then which which of the other two are neutral and ground okay so to do that we're gonna again look at our combinations here so I'm gonna scratch out the the 220 so we're just gonna focus on our 120 combinations where this is our this is our good outcome where these are the numbers that we're looking for, these good numbers, okay. So in this scenario, what we need to look at is our two combinations that both came out the same, that both came out approximately 120 volts, which in this case is one to two and two to three. We need to look at, since those both came out the same, which is the, which is the common number between those two? Which is the common pin? So if you look, the common pin would be pin two because from pin 1 to 2, it's 120 volts, and pin 2 to 3, it's 120 volts. So whenever we're touching pin 2 going to any other pin, we get 120 volts. That tells us that in this combination, pin 2 is now our hot wire. So I'm going to circle pin 2 here. So on our little drawing now, pin 2 we know is now our hot wire. So, so I'll write down there. So pin two is hot, okay? So that means that pin one and pin three are ground and neutral. Now, if the electrician did not follow standard connections on this, then we're not really gonna know the difference between neutral and ground. However, our system should function fine either way. Um, as a reference, most of the time on these twist lock type connections, the, the one that you see that's the largest that has this extra little hook thing, this extra little L on it, usually that's the ground. If that's the case, then that would tell us if one of those is not the hot pin, then likely that one is the ground and then our other pin is neutral. Okay, so if we're now having to to wire a connector to plug into this, our standard I360 power cable uses three wires. It uses, and it's a connection similar to this, okay? Uh, our wire colors are black, white, and green. If it's wired correctly to this connector, the black wire should go to the gold screw the white wire should go to the silver screw and the green wire should go to the green screw. So in this combination, the black wire, which should be wired to the silver screw, is your hot wire. The white wire going to the silver screw, that is your neutral wire. And then the green wire going to the green screw is your ground wire. So basically what you need, assuming that your simulator end is wired correctly with black to gold, white to silver, and green to ground, that means that on the other end where you need to put your new connector, you need to wire your black wire to whatever pin we found out is the hot pin. And then you're going to want to wire your white wire to the pin that we determine if we say if we say that pin 3 for instance is the pin that has the extra little L on it here then we're going to call pin 3 our ground and pin 1 our neutral but that's less important than the hot wire the main thing is to make sure the hot wire is correct um, so you need to wire your black wire from the i360 cord to the hot wire on their outlet and then your green to the ground connection on their outlet and your white to the neutral connection on their outlet. 
this should be all you need to make the machine functional. Um, this will make, assuming that your hot wire is wired correctly and that you do have 120 volts coming in, this will make your simulator function. Here's how you will know that your neutral and your ground are backwards. If you get on your UPS, if you get a warning on your UPS, it won't harm your system, but you'll get a warning saying building site wiring fault or grounding fault or something like that. Your UPS will still function, but it will give you that warning that you have a bad ground. That generally means that your neutral and your ground are reversed. So if you get that error on your UPS, you can simply change your neutral wire and your ground wire, which if wired correctly on the simulator side should be the green wire and the white wire. Um, again, though, only reverse the neutral in the ground. Continue to use the hot wire that you're already using. Make sure that's that's the important part of this whole thing, that whatever we determine at coming out of the wall is the hot wire, that that one always remains the hot wire. You cannot change that. If the hot wire gets accidentally wired to neutral or ground, you'll trip a breaker. If the neutral and the ground get reversed, you won't trip anything. Like I said, you'll get a fault on the UPS, but the machine will still run. Um, I hope that that clarifies things. And if not, uh, we will have further discussion.